Hey, what's up? Over 6,000 of you guys rated every single DVD killer from one to five. And after a few weeks, we finally have our results. So now we know the semi-official ranking for the entire community, even though it's only 5,000 people. There are some placements on here that I absolutely do not understand, but we'll go through this and judge you all together. Although, I'd say most of you are pretty accurate. The worst killer in the game, ranked by you guys, is Freddy. I don't know if I can agree with this. He is bad. He's very, very bad. And he's definitely one of the lowest tiers, but he's, he at least has a power. <laughs> He has some decent anti-loop and some decent teleporting abilities. I feel like there's other killers that have all of his powers, but in a better way. I mean, even take the unknown that just recently got released. Like he has better anti-loop and he has a better teleport ability, which is basically all what Freddy is. So Freddy, unfortunately, is just not that great right now. And they need to do something. They need to do something to buff him. He's also just very uninteresting. So if they could figure out a way to make him a little bit more fun, I think the entire community would enjoy that. The second worst killer in the game is the Trapper. This I can agree with. The Trapper is god awful considering that he's probably going to be the first killer that most people play in this game because he's like the staple of dbd he's just so bad like he starts off without a power at all and then he has to go around the map to get his power and his power is not even that good to begin with like yeah it can instant down people and yeah it can snowball if you're able to get people into basement but there's so many killers that can do that in a way easier way. Does that make sense? I don't have much more to say about him. He's just, he's so outdated and he's just so bad. The third place spot, which I very much disagree with, is the pig. She just barely beat the next killer by about 15, 20 points. Well, I don't, I don't think she belongs here. I think she belongs like a couple of spots up. The pig's most important abilities are head traps, which can honestly cause a ton of amazing slowdown. And it pairs really well with perks like Pentamental Plaything. So you just create a ton of extra objectives to the survivors so that they just have so many different things to do besides gens. And this can be really strong. She doesn't actually need to get head pops to get value out of them. And it can create a ton of slowdown, which also kind of works for both small and large maps. Large maps because it takes the survivors longer to get the head traps off, but then the pig has less traversability. But on small maps, the pig can get around easier, except that the survivors have an easier time taking the traps off. So she kind of works on both in different ways. Her stealth is absolutely awful. Luckily her ambush got a little bit of a buff, so that's kind of nice. Although I'm pretty sure her head traps got nerfed. So you can't change the pig without nerfing her. All right, fourth place spot is going to Michael Myers. I can agree with this. He is either right down here or all the way up here, depending on the add-ons. He base kit is so outdated. His ability is just, it takes too long and then you don't get that much use out of it. Like obviously the instant down is great and the extra lunge distance and the, you know, faster vaulting speed, but you just waste so much time trying to get that stock on people that the power you get out of it usually isn't worth the time investment, if that makes sense. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get into tier three, obviously, but there's just so many killers that can get kills faster that makes him kind of lower on the tier. And then of course his add-ons bring him just way higher on the list because they are absolutely broken. And really every single Myers game you're going to play with the new blood point economy is just which add-ons do they have? All right, the next spot. I, what? The twins? The, tw the twins? You guys realize that most people put the twins in A tier, right? <laughs> Why? Why are they all the way down here? I don't understand. I don't understand. You guys put the twins below Legion and Clown. What? That's... That is super interesting. And I wonder why. Here's my theory. Here's my theory, right? Most people have less than a thousand hours. So they don't actually really fully understand the strength of the twins. And two, if they play as the twins, they feel super clunky because the twins are just really clunky with all the animations and cooldowns. And they're kind of difficult to use if you don't know how to use them properly. So I assume you might think they're kind of bad based on that, which is fair. People thought the nurse was bad when they played her for the first time. And three, my other theory is that as survivor, when you play against them, the only people that play the twins twins are people trying her out for the first time and then never again. So it's people playing as the twins for the first time, which means they're not going to be good at that killer, which means you think they're weak. It's just a theory. I could be completely wrong, but you know, there's, there's a little bit of logic in that, I would say, because otherwise I have absolutely no idea why the twins are this low. They're definitely better than like half the roster. The next spot is going to the Legion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this makes sense. Like they're they're decent, right? They have a decent power. They can keep people injured. If you're playing against inexperienced survivors who still heal against you, you're pretty much guaranteed a win. It's super easy to get injured, but then you have to actually chase them. So that's what makes this killer come all the way down to kind of near the bottom. The fact that you have to chase survivors, it's a, it's a hard concept, isn't it? The Legion is just like, in my opinion, one of the most average killers, like a little bit on the weaker side, but very, very average. They're kind of like plague in the sense that they can keep people 
people injured very easily, but then still need to actually down them. And that's the hardest part. If you're on like Garden of Joy or like some really survivor sided map, you're almost never going to catch up to the survivor unless you do some insane mind game or if the survivor is really bad, obviously. So it's just really hit or miss with this killer. And I feel like since they're so easy to play as a lot of less experienced killers play as them. So that also makes it easier to go against. All right, moving on to the next spot. It is the clown. Honestly, pretty based. I actually think the clown is way more underrated than people say. The clown is bad, right? He only has one good thing about him and that's his anti-loop, right? But his anti-loop is absolutely through the roof. So if you can manage to keep pressure up by downing quick with your ability because you're good with your bottles, he can be pretty damn good. The problem is though, if you don't down a survivor within like 20, 30 seconds, you probably lost. You have essentially no mobility, no map pressure. The only thing you have going for you is your bottles in chase. But I do think he's very underrated because in chase, he's an absolute beast. And if the survivors aren't really coordinated and don't really know how to kind of optimize the macro gameplay of DBD, it'll be pretty easy to get your kills on Clown. Okay, the next spot is technically not where they're supposed to go, but I figured I would ask anyway, and this is the unknown. Okay, before you're confused, I made this question optional because I sent out this Google form like a day or two after he came out. So I made him optional because people don't fully understand the killer yet, and they don't know whether or not he's good or whether or not he's bad. So there are a lot of votes that just left it blank, which means that his score is lower. So that's why he's lower on the list here but I still wanted to see kind of what people would put and it's mostly it's like honestly a solid mix between threes and fours I would say are the majority of them there's a couple that are twos and a couple that are fives so people really have no idea where this killer will be but most of it I would say is three or four with a couple fives sprinkled in so you guys seem to think that he is very very strong and I honestly would have to agree I think he'd be like top B tier maybe bottom A tier I think once you're able to master him you're gonna be kind of a force to be reckoned with because his instant teleport ability is so unbelievably strong and I love it it's he's so fun to play as and going for like the cool mortar shots is just it's basically like a side grade to Huntress so I think a couple months down the line he would probably be placed like within the top 20 killers within the top 15 maybe but as of now he's just here because a lot of people didn't vote the next spot is going to the skull merchant to be honest with you I don't know if I can agree or disagree with this one because there nobody plays against the skull merchant and if somebody does play against the skull merchant my teammates will see so it, there's just no I just have no idea I have no idea if she's strong or not after her rework because every single game I've played against her people either kill themselves on hook or they DC and I have no desire to play as her so uh you know Skull Merchant essentially doesn't exist. The next spot is going to the Onryo. This one's hard because the Onryo keeps going back and forth between like one of the worst killers in the game to one of the most oppressive killers in the game. And she's so complex that it's probably harder for new killers to pick her up, which makes her seem weaker than she actually is. I think as of currently, she might be a little bit higher, but I, I honestly don't know. Like she changes so often, it's kind of hard to keep up. Before her most recent rework, she was absolutely way higher on the list. Like her condemned mechanic was so good she might have hit a tier but now she kind of dropped back down but honestly this is another killer I just don't really know because it's rare to get her and she changes so often that it's kind of hard to gauge an actual rating for this killer the next spot is going to the Wraith I'm honestly surprised how high he made it up on this list like Wraith is one of the weaker killers so I'm surprised he's higher than like Skull Merchant and Onryo I guess a lot of people have trouble playing against him because he's very hit and run and he also has that lunge out of his cloak which a lot of people seem to have trouble dealing with but he's still so counterable with loops and with holding W like there's a a lot of things that you can do to play against this killer to make him just so much worse. In my anecdotal experience, every single Wraith I play against is absolutely cracked. So if that's what everyone else is playing against, I can understand why they're a little bit higher. But I still think like from an objective standpoint, compared to the powers of the other killers we've recently been talking about, I don't think Wraith deserves to be this high on the list. The next spot is going to Ghostface, which I completely agree with this placement. I think he is the like borderline middle of the road killer. He's strong, but not too strong. He's pretty easy to pick up. He's just the most average killer in this game. You can do really well with him if you're able to get stocks off, or you could get absolutely obliterated by survivors that know what they're doing. And if you're on like a complete outdoor map where you'll just be seen no matter where you are, everything about him is just decent. And he's just a very solid middle of the road killer. The next spot is going to the trickster. I think personally, I would put the trickster maybe a little bit lower, but honestly, it's just another one of those killers like Skull Merchant that most people kill themselves or DC on. So again, it's kind of hard to gauge. And he has the clown effect where he's really good inside of chase, but really bad 
on pretty much every other front. I think the thing that makes him way higher than Clown, though, is the fact that his main event ability can be used to just tunnel and camp people really easily. So I think that's why he's a bit higher. I do think a lot of people rate him higher because in those like in chase situations, if you don't have any walls as a survivor, there's like quite literally nothing you can do. You just are automatically guaranteed to go down, which makes him feel super frustrating to play against. And it's just super boring to play as because there's no interactivity. So I think that just like guaranteed down aspect of him is why people rate him so high. The next spot is going to the doctor. Dude, like this one's hard. This one's hard because if you're a good doctor, you can make some crazy plays with his ability. But honestly, I, I would kind of have to agree that he's very middle of the road. Like he's another one of those killers that I feel like is, is super balanced and super average. You know, he's great against immerse survivors, but really bad against hold W survivors. But there's a ton of mind games that you can do with this killer and you get a ton of information throughout the match. So if you're able to take advantage of those two things, then you'll probably do well. But again, a lot of the times it's hard to catch up to the survivor if you just constantly are using your power. The next spot is going to Bubba. And honestly, I, I can see this. Like I would put him a little bit higher personally, just because I play Bubba a lot. But in like a base level, I can understand this placement because he's overall really solid. But there are some maps, especially recently with the amount of maps that have like 67 pallets. It's pretty annoying to play as him when every survivor just pallet stuns you and pallet stuns you and then goes to the next pallet and pallet stuns you. Like, I don't know you guys watching if you're survivor mains or killer mains or whatever, but if you've ever played Bubba on Gideon Meat Plant, you know the pain. It is unbelievably boring. You find a survivor, you chase them to a pallet, they throw the pallet when you bring your chainsaw up, you break it, they get to the next pallet, and you just repeat the cycle like 47 times throughout the match, and by that time, all of the gens are done. It is so annoying, but besides that, if you have Bamboozle, you can do really well with this killer. But that's another problem. You're required to use Bamboozle if you want to get any kills with this killer, so three perks. Let's go. The next spot is the Dredge. I can't agree with this one because I absolutely suck at the Dredge, and I personally think that he is pretty weak. He has a teleport ability, but it's one of the worst teleport abilities in the game besides maybe Freddy, because A, the survivors can, you know, make your teleport animation longer by locking the lockers, and B, you're limited to the locker spawn. So if there's a map with really bad locker spawns, it's going to be much harder to maneuver around the map. And then his anti-loop is just very mid, in my opinion. It essentially just creates a 50-50, but if you don't position yourself right, the survivor can just easily hold W and go to the next loop. So you really need to be good at zoning and forcing the survivor into a certain position to do well with this killer. Maybe it's just a skill issue on my end because I absolutely suck at dredge. Like, I honestly have probably lost more games as this killer than one. And that's... <laughs> And that's saying something. So ignore my opinion because I'm just trash at this killer. The next spot is going to Nemesis. Fair enough. I think Nemesis is another very average killer. I think this placement is pretty solid. I would say, honestly, the best part about him is just the fact that he can shred through pallets, like absolutely shred through pallets and get hits over the pallets. So it makes him a really good killer in chase. And then he has a tiny bit of information with his zombies because the zombies arms will go up if they're chasing a survivor and a little tiny bit of slowdown with the infected stuff, as well as if zombies are, you know, camping a survivor or camping a gen, which can happen. And it's hilarious if you're playing the nemesis, but it's the most annoying thing ever if you're playing survivor, because you're not going to like waste a pallet on a zombie. So you just have to go somewhere else. <laughs> the next spot you guys put as the hag. Ooh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I personally would put her a bit higher. I think she's way stronger than people realize, but that nerf to her where people can wipe away her traps kind of made her like so much worse. She is a fantastic pub stomper. The problem is that when you're going against good survivors that know how to play against her, you're kind of helpless. She has the trapper effect where if you just have a survivor that's constantly chasing her and constantly triggering her traps, she essentially cannot get anything done and has no power. So if you're going against one of those teams, she is very, very bad. But against average teams in pub, Hubs, she can absolutely obliterate them like unbelievably obliterate them especially if you're on a map like hawkins like sure they can see your traps very easily but they have to go through those hallways so if you're chasing a survivor they're gonna run through so many of your traps and you'll get a ton of hits and she's not even just good because of that like whole camping thing that everyone complains about she's just very good at securing an area and keeping the pressure rolling throughout the course of the match if you've gone against like a good insta teleport hag you know exactly what i'm talking about the next spot is going to the knight oh i think the knight would go below all of the other average killers that we've mentioned. I just think that there's a lot more potential with the other killers that we've previously talked about than him. Like the knight is good. You can get guaranteed hits in loops. You have some kind of mini form of map pressure. But overall, I just think the kind of lack of depth, so to speak, of this killer makes him a little bit lower on the list. So it's interesting that you guys put him higher than, you know, most of these other middle of the road killers. From my experience, if you could absolutely break all pressure that the knight has by just not being close together, it makes it so hard for the knight to 
to do anything, which I guess is not a really good argument because that goes for every single killer in the game. Don't have more to say about the knight. <laughs> the next spot is going to the Demogorgon. You know me, I have a bias towards Demo because I play him a lot. So I think he's way stronger than people give him credit for. But from an objective standpoint, I can understand why he's at this placement. He's very good, but still has a regular chase with survivors that he has to deal with, which on certain maps can be an absolute pain. But overall, he's a super solid killer. He has a great teleporting ability where you could put it wherever you want and get information off of it. So you have information, you have map pressure and mobility with your portals. You have a very strong anti-loop ability that can make a lot of the really good loops just completely useless like Shaq or even some loops that have really bad collision that you could just completely slide off of. Like the cars near the main building on Cole Tower. I feel like this killer is good on every single front except for like snowballing. So I think he would go a bit higher, but I can understand this placement. The next spot is going to Singularity. I honestly thought that you guys were going to put him way lower on the list, but I'm glad that he's I'm glad that he's up here because he is one of the hardest killers to play in the game, which usually means that a lot of people think he's weaker than he actually is. But I honestly really agree with this placement and maybe even put him a little bit higher. If you've ever played against a really good Singularity, it's hard to play against. The people that are goaded at Singularity are very scary. <laughs> this is one of those killers that can get downs quickly and has very good potential, but it's just harder to get to that point compared to other killers. But once you've reached that threshold where you're really good at this killer, he is a beast. He is an absolute beast. Like I've played against a really good singularity on Larry's and he obliterated us. A singularity on an indoor map. That doesn't make any sense. Good singularities are so scary. So I'm sure a lot of you have played against at least one in your life and understand the power of this killer. The next spot is going to the Deathslinger. Ugh. I, I think Deathslinger should go a little bit lower. I think he should be more in the average middle section with like Ghostface and Doctor and all those guys. He's still just like so weak outside of his chase because it takes so long to reload. If you miss your shots, you give him so much distance. He has no map traversal. He has no map mobility. So overall, like, yeah, he's really good in chase, but he's so unbelievably bad outside of chase that if survivors are smart and like just don't stick together, you're going to get destroyed. So yes, he's a solid killer, but overall, I think the weaknesses of him not having any map mobility, map traversal, any of that stuff just brings him a bit lower in my opinion. The next spot is going to Pinhead. I think this is a fairly solid placement. I know a lot of people hate playing against him, but I personally think he's a very well-balanced and fun killer on both sides. Like, yeah, his box is annoying if you play solo queue, but he's one of my favorite killers to play against. He has an anti-loop ability that actually has counterplay and actually has interactivity. And I feel like that's rare with anti-loop because you guys know me. I think anti-loop that's done poorly just makes this game so awful to play. But when you do anti-loop right, like Huntress or Demo or Pinhead, it makes chases so much more fun because you both are interacting with each other. And in terms of strength, I can agree with this placement because he's pretty solid overall if you're able to hit your shots and if you're able to hit your chains. And as long as you're keeping up with the box pressure and able to, you know, grab the box from survivors when they start solving it, you get quite a lot of slowdown throughout the match, which can be really helpful. The next spot is the Executioner. Again, pretty solid placement. Again, this is another really well-balanced killer with a fun and interactive anti-loop ability. And overall, assuming that you're able to use your ability, he's pretty good. I play against a lot of pyramid heads that just don't use their ability, which makes no sense. I don't know why they're playing pyramid head to begin with, but the fact that you can hit survivors through walls, if you run I'm all ears, you can do that to insane degrees. You can cage survivors to avoid pallet stuns, or if you need to quickly hook someone to get more pressure. You have the mini Mori, which is great to save you time. Like there's a lot of just time saving things with this killer, which all add up to make him a pretty strong overall killer. And then of course he counters a lot of the anti-tunnel perks with his cages. So that's also helpful if you're one of those killers. Okay, the next spot is the artist. Another solid placement considering that nobody plays this killer. She's very good. She has great map wide pressure. She has a great anti loop ability. And yeah, honestly, there's not much more to say about her. If you're able to use one or two crows to hit a survivor, especially if they're in a straight hallway like Midwitch, which will be super easy. If you're able to hit them with one of those, then you're able to do the shotgun formation because you get your crows back in time before they can repel the crows, which means you're kind of guaranteed to get an injury or a down. So she can be super strong. And the fact that you can pair her so well with Dead Man's Switch makes her just way better. The artist without out dead man switch would go down a bit but just the fact that she has this combination and it works so well with her kit gives her this essential slowdown that she needs it's kind of like pairing bubba with bamboozle if you don't have this perk you're just asking to lose honestly the next spot, which I'm kind of surprised about, is the plague. I'm surprised because I thought you guys would put her lower, but I'm glad you put her this high because I definitely think she's one of the better killers in the game. I just figured that since she's kind of hard to use, you guys would think that she's lower, but I, I obviously I was proven wrong. The plague is another one of those very solid but balanced killers that has a great, interesting, unique mechanic of keeping the survivors injured. But if they don't want to stay injured, then they give her an even stronger ability. I personally love this dynamic and it makes the plague feel unique. We don't have any other killer like the plague. 
building. A lot of the recent killers are just combinations of previous killers, but nothing has replicated the style that Plague has, which I really like. Obviously, her biggest strength is the fact that she can keep people injured the entire game, so it makes chases much quicker. And in public matches, you're going to get a lot of people that cleanse when they're not supposed to, so you're going to be able to get your power really easily and absolutely obliterate the survivors. The next spot, which I just, I can't agree with this, and that's the Hillbilly. No. Like, yes, the buff made him so much better, but Hillbilly is not, he's not, he's not up here. He's not. I will fully admit that I need more time with this new version of Hillbilly to get a very fully fleshed out opinion on him. But based on my current knowledge of this killer, I think he's way lower on the list. Like, he is so unbelievably map dependent. The good thing that he was meant to do, having good map traversal, is just so bad now because there's so much clutter in all the maps and there's so many indoor maps now that his traversal just kind of sucks, except for on very specific maps. His instant down ability isn't that different than what it used to be, but if I recall correctly, they increased the initial turn rate of the killer, which makes him really able to go for some insane curves. But again, if you've played against multiple, multiple really good curve abilities, you know that it's very difficult to hit those and it's pretty easy to counter. So my theory for why you guys put him so high on the list is because nobody ever really played him before this buff. So a lot of you guys probably don't know how to play against him. So now that there's a bunch of people playing him because he feels a lot better to play as or just playing him to see the difference with the new buff, you have to learn how to play against this killer. But I could be completely wrong. Maybe he completely deserves this placement. I just can't see a world where his ability is better than Demogorgon or Executioner or Artist. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch here. If you're enjoying this video, drop a like and comment a robot emoji down in the comments below. It's not a metaphor for anything. I promise. The next killer on the list is Weska. Good placement. This killer is fantastic. Like such a successful killer. There's a couple of very minor things that I wish would be changed about him, like making it more obvious if he's going to do his other dash or if he's putting his tentacle away and trying to reduce the tunneling aspect of his infected stuff. But besides that, very, very good, fun, balanced killer. And I absolutely agree with this placement. I think he's super high up on the list. He's very strong. He has great map mobility. He has a super solid chase ability if you know what you're doing. And he has some built-in slowdown with his infected stuff. So it's kind of a jack of all trades killer. I think the fact that you get your ability so often and you can use it for both traversal and for chasing just makes this killer super fast paced. And a lot of fast paced killers tend to be stronger because it requires more, you know, thinking power from the survivors. Plus he can get to different objectives quicker and also just get some crazy hits that the survivors wouldn't expect because the survivors are on high ping. That's not a Wesker issue. That's just a ping issue, but it's still pretty prevalent on this killer because he moves so quickly. The next spot is going to the Oni. 100% agree with this placement. He is so unbelievably strong, but still balanced, which is great. Another really well-designed killer. The reason he's so strong is obviously because of his Blood Fury. It is such a good ability. The fact that you can get from one end of the map to the complete other in just like 10 seconds, and the fact that it has no collision, so you can just slide off of objects super easily, makes him have this insane traversal and this insane chase power that's also really fast, so you can do some crazy mind games that the survivors just can't really react to. And this power has so much good snowball potential, so you can have all five gens done with zero hooks and still win really easily. That alone makes this killer super high up on the list. So you guys did a phenomenal job with this placement. He is a great killer, a very, very strong killer. Punishes being injured, so forcing heals, which is not something that survivors always want to do, especially if you're running like Sloppy or Gift of Pain. So yeah, fantastic killer. The next spot is going to Chucky. Another great placement. I think Oni is a bit better than Chucky, but Chucky is still very strong. His chase potential is absolutely insane. Like if you're going into a scamper, the survivors are banking on you personally making a mistake. If you don't make a mistake, the survivors are getting hit. And the fact that he is a small killer with a stealth ability, a killer that you can't see that has a stealth ability is a wild combination. Even without his stealth ability, there are some loops that there's literally nothing that you can do. This killer is unbelievably strong. The fact that he can crawl under pallets and still use his ability is insane, but he's not higher on the list probably because he doesn't have good map traversal. So if you spread out, you can destroy this killer. And he also doesn't have that great of curving. So it's hard to get hits if the survivors keep corner attacking you. But overall, a great killer. Very, very strong. The next spot, which makes me so happy for it to be up here, is the Huntress. I don't know if I can agree with the Huntress being this high. I would probably put her near Wesker or Oni but she is very good, especially now that she has two more hatchets. I have absolutely no idea why they buffed the Huntress. I think she was one of the most perfectly balanced, well-designed killers in the game before the buff. Obviously, besides the hitboxes, but that's a ping issue. But like, I don't know what data they're looking at where they're like, ah, yes we need to buff the Huntress because she was already one of the stronger killers in the game. Like she was top A tier for a lot of people. But hey, 
I, I guess I'll take it. I'm hoping that they gave her more hatchets because they want to incentivize people to go for cool shots because they have less risk of doing so. But if you know anything about the community, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> so I don't understand it. But anyway, she's great. Like she has a very strong ability. The fact that she can damage survivors from the opposite side of the map is insane. Like if you get really good at Huntress, you obliterate survivors because they just, they, they don't know where you are and they don't expect a hatchet to come flying towards you. Like for example, take this clip of me playing on Cold Wind. There are so many shots that I got from across the map that they wouldn't really expect. Like I'm just going to play a compilation of all of them. Once you get to this point where you have the muscle memory down and you understand the trajectory of where the hatchet is going to land, you just get random hits all the time and it, it just makes her so powerful. But even if you're not doing this, she's still good in loops. She can hit over windows. She can hit over pallets. She can hit over loops that are short. She can just deal so many damage states so quickly that it makes her a very strong killer. But of course, the downside is that she has no map mobility and she has to go out of her way to reload, which isn't as big of a deal anymore now that she has two more hatchets. So I personally would place her a little bit lower, but overall, very, very good killer. All right, now for the top three killers. I don't even need, I do, do I need to explain it? It's Spirit, then Blight, then Nurse. Like, whoa, what a surprise. It's been that way for the past 17,000 years. YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this video, so check it out and see if they're right. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Anyway, I love you guys. Peace.